Session Forty Seven 第四十七讲，我们上一讲开始讨论哥林多前后书第三章的三个的记号。第一个是摩西脸上的光荣。上一讲我们讲到哥林多后书第三章第十节，那从前有荣光的，因这极大的荣光就算不得有荣光了，就是说相对于新月。就约摩西的荣光，就算不得什么了。我们继续 ，page one ninety two， 一百九十二页。Although the old covenant had its glory, it could not compare with the greater glory of the new covenant. 虽然旧约有它的荣光，但是不能与新约的更大的荣光来比较。The comparative glories of these two epochs relate to that which each Covenant administers. 两个不同时期的荣耀，他们都是与每一个约所执行的是什么有关。Although a revelation from God that came in glory, the old covenant ministered death and condemnation. 虽然上帝的启示是在荣耀中来到人的中间的，但是旧约带来的。是死和定罪 ，because of the law's effectiveness in revealing sin, it subjected man to curse. 因为律法很有效的显明人的罪，因此呢，就将人伏在咒诅之下。In sharpest contrast, the new covenant may be characterized as a ministry of the Spirit, a ministry of righteousness. 与这个做鲜明的对照的是新约。我们可以说，新约的特点是圣灵的知识，使人称义或者义的知识。Instead of bringing in its wake condemnation and death, the new covenant effects righteousness and life. 新约不但没有带来定罪和死的后果，新约的效果是义和生命。The superiority of this Consumative covenant resides not merely in its having some material characteristic of greater glory. This covenant is more precious, not only because it has some material characteristic, that is, in material glory. Instead, that which the new covenant accomplishes declares to the world its greater glory. Instead. 新约所所成就的，就向世界宣告它的更大的荣耀。B， 第二个，呃，摩西的约的记号 ，the symbol of the fading of the glory of Moses' face， 摩西脸上的荣光的褪去的这个记号。Paul secondly comments on the symbol of the fading of the glory of Moses' face。第二，保罗啊，解释摩西脸上的荣耀的褪去这个的记号。In Second Corinthians three, seven, and thirteen， 哥林多后书第三章第七节，还有第十三节。第七节说，那用字刻在石头上属死的知识，尚且有荣光，甚至以色列人因摩西脸上的荣光。不能定睛看他的脸，这荣光原是渐渐褪去的。第十三节，不像摩西将帕子蒙在脸上，叫以色列人不能定睛看到那将废者的结局。Paul notes that the glory of Moses's face faded. 保罗注意到摩西脸上的荣光褪去了。His interpretation of the significance of this fading appears in verse eleven. 在第十一节，使徒保罗就解释这个荣光褪去的重要性。For the same term used to describe the declining of the glory of Moses's face is applied to the entire Mosaic covenant of law. 在第十一节呢，用来形容摩西脸上荣光的褪去那个字，现在用来指整个摩西律法的约。第十一节 ，verse eleven. For if that which passes away, that is the ministration under Moses, was with glory, 
how much more that which remains, that is, ministration of the new covenant, is in glory. 第十一节，若那废掉的有荣光，这个废掉的，啊，就是，啊，在摩西律法这约之下的知识，若它有荣光，这长存的就更有荣光了。长存的就是新约的知识。Not only was the glory of the old covenant symbolically represented at the time of the giving of the law, 在上帝颁布律法的时候，我们不单单看到旧约的荣耀的代表或者是记号 ，the provisional and transitory character of the old covenant also received symbolic representation. 当时呢，也有一个记号象征着旧约是暂时的，啊，是暂定的。Moses' radiance faded. Moses' 脸上的荣光褪去 symbolically depicting the fading of the ministration of law. 就象征着整个律法的执事也是会褪去的 This fading character of the Mosaic administration contrasts with the permanence of the new covenant. Moses' 的约的整个的制度。会褪去这个性质，就与新月是永久的，做了一个鲜明的对照。The new covenant excels the old covenant not only in the greatness of its glory. 新月比旧月更高，不单单因为它的荣耀更大 ，it excels also in the permanence of that glory. 新月更高是因为它的荣耀是永久性的。The new covenant is that which remains. Verse eleven. 新月乃是那长存的，第十一节长存的。C 第三个记号 ，the symbol of the veiling of Moses's face， 摩西脸上带着帕子这个记号。The third symbol present at the giving of the law relates to the veiling of Moses's face。在上帝颁布律法的时候，第三个记号就是摩西的脸上带上帕子。Second Corinthians chapter three, verse twelve to verse fifteen。哥林多后书第三章十二节到第十五节，我们既有这样的盼望，就大胆讲说，不像摩西将帕子蒙在脸上，叫以色列人不能定睛看到那将废者的结局。但他们的心底刚硬，直到今日诵读旧约的时候，这帕子还没有结局，这帕子在基督里已经废去了。然而，直到今日，每逢诵读摩西书的时候，帕子还在他们心上。Second Corinthians, chapter three, verses twelve to fifteen. Paul does not stop simply at recognizing pragmatically the presence of a veil in the law giving sequel. 使徒保罗不仅仅是很实用主义的啊，说到当上帝颁布律法之后。摩西脸上蒙了帕子，保罗不仅仅讲这么多而已。He offers a most profound interpretation of the symbolic value of the veil employed by Moses. 他做了一个很很有深层意义的注解，解释摩西所用的帕子有怎么样的一个的象征性的价值。Even further， 不但如此，再进一步 ，Paul asserts the continuing Presence of this symbolic veil in the midst of current Judaism, Paul 进一步的说，在他当代的犹太教，这个象征性的帕子还在这些犹太教徒的中间的。Notice carefully verse fourteen. 请注意第十四节，谨慎的去读第十四节。但他们的心底刚硬，直到今日诵读旧约的时候，这帕子还没有结去。这帕子在基督里已经废去了。Second Corinthians three fourteen. Notice that it is the same veil that appeared in Moses's day, which continues to the present. 请注意，在摩西的时代所出现的同一个帕子，一直存留到保罗的当代。Paul does not intend to suggest that some one thousand five hundred year old relic still exists. 使徒保罗的用意当然就不是说有一个一千五百年这么老旧的一个的呃圣物仍然存在 ，nor does he intend to conjure up some 
allegorical interpretation of Moses as well. 他也没有要想出一个对摩西的帕子一种的寓意的解释法。Instead, he desires only to exposit the original significance of the same veil. 不是的，保罗的用意只不过是要解释那个同一个帕子原来的意思是什么。What is the effect of a veil? 一个帕子造成怎么样的效果呢 ？Generally, a veil keeps something from being revealed. 一般来说，呃，一张的帕子就是隐藏。一个东西不让它显露。What does the symbolic veil of Moses keep from being revealed to Israel even today? 甚至乎到保罗的日子呢？究竟摩西这个象征中的帕子是隐藏什么不让它显露呢 ？Paul answers this question explicitly in verse fourteen. 使徒保罗清楚地回答了这个问题。注意第十四节 ：The same veil remains. It not being revealed that it,、uh, that is the old administration of the law, is done away in Christ. 第十四节，啊，这个帕子还没有截去，啊，这个帕子就是旧约的律法的执行呢，是在基督里废去的。The tragic thing about Judaism in Paul's day. Was that it did not comprehend the transitory character of the Mosaic dispensation. Paul 时期的犹太教的悲剧性的情况，就是他们没有明白到摩西时期的制度是暂时性的。Judaism rightly understood the glory of the old covenant. 犹太教正确的理解旧约是荣耀的 ，but it did not grasp the fading. Character of that glory, 但是他没有掌握到那个荣耀是会褪去的。The veil therefore symbolized the blindness of Israel to the transitoriness and fading character of the Mosaic covenant. 所以这个帕子就象征着以色列人的盲目，他没有看到摩西的约的暂时性和必将褪去这个性质。They could not see the end of the law. As it was to be realized in Christ, they can't see the end of the law. Because the end of the law is fulfilled in Jesus. Generally, it is supposed that、uh, the function of Moses's veil was to shield Israel from the excessiveness of the glory of Moses's face. Generally, it is supposed that the function of Moses's veil was to shield Israel from the excessiveness of the glory of Moses's face. Generally, it is supposed that the function of Moses's veil was to shield This interpretation appears to conform to the statement in Second Corinthians three seven. This kind of explanation seems to match the statement in the Second Corinthians three seven. It seems to match the statement in the Second Corinthians three seven. It seems to match the statement in the Second Corinthians three seven. It seems to match the statement in the Second Corinthians three seven. It seems to match the statement in the Second Corinthians three seven. It seems to match the statement in the Paul reminds the Corinthians that the old covenant came with glory. 在第七节，使徒保罗提醒哥林多的基督徒说，这个旧约是带着荣耀而来的。So that the sons of Israel were not able to gaze at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face, which glory was fading. 以色列人因摩西面上的荣光不能定睛看他的脸，的荣光原是渐渐褪去的。However, 但是。Several considerations point in another direction for analyzing the significance of Moses' veil in the Sinai narrative. 我们要考虑到其他一些的因素，就让我们要在另外一个角度、另外一个方向去解释在西乃山的记载上摩西的帕子的重要意义是什么。First, 第一方面要考虑到 the structure of this verse places emphasis on the fading character of glory of Moses' face. 这一节的，呃，造句的结构所强调的是摩西面上的荣耀那个褪去的性质。Moses's face was radiant indeed. 诚然，摩西的脸是光荣的 ，but it was a fading radiance that marked his countenance. 但是，摩西脸上的光彩是褪去的。
这个是它的炼容的特点。Secondly， 第二方面要考虑的 ，No mention whatsoever is made of Moses' veil and its function in this verse。在这节没有提到啊，摩西的帕子和他所扮演的角色的。Subsequently in his discussion。Paul indicates the function of the veil. Paul, in his discussion, also points out the function of the veil. Moses put a veil on his face. Moses put a veil on his face that the sons of Israel might not gaze to the end of that which was passing away. Verse thirteen, 第十三节，叫以色列人不能定睛看到那将废者的结局。Although the significance of this phrase has been disputed vigorously, 虽然学者们呢很强烈的辩论，呃，这个短句的意思是什么 ？The most convincing position seems to be 最令人说服的，呃的立场应该是 ，that Paul is saying that Moses donned his veil that the sons of Israel might not stare at Moses' face while the glory was fading. 这节的意思就是说，摩西戴上帕子，好在以色列人。不定睛看摩西的脸，就是说，当这个荣耀在废去的时候，以色列人不再定睛看摩西的脸。Thirdly， 第三方面要考虑的 ，a closer look at Exodus 34 verses 29 to 35。当我们谨慎的去研读出埃及记第三十四章。二十九到三十五节的时候呢 ，strongly supports the view which understands the veil as concealing the fading character of Moses's glory rather than the excessive character of his glory. So, 很强烈的支持我们这个观点，就是说，帕子是用来隐藏摩西荣耀的褪去的性质，而不是用来隐藏他太大的荣耀。出埃及记三十四章二十九到三十五节。摩西手里拿着两块法板下西奈山的时候，不知道自己的脸皮因耶和华和他说话就发了光。亚伦和以色列众人看见摩西的面皮发光，就怕挨近他。摩西叫他们来，于是亚伦和会中的官长都到他那里去。摩西就与他们说话。随后以色列众人都进前来，他就把耶和华在西奈山与他所说的一切话都吩咐他们。摩西与他们说完了话，就用帕子蒙上脸。但摩西进了耶和华面前，与他说话，就截去帕子。极致出来的时候，便将耶和华所吩咐的告诉以色列人。三十五节，以色列人看见摩西的面皮发光，摩西又用帕子蒙上脸。等到他进去与耶和华说话，就截去帕子。Exodus 34 verses 29 to 35. According to Exodus 34, the radiant Moses first appeared before the people who fled from him. Verses 29 and 30. 根据出埃及记三十四章，那个脸上发光的摩西，首先向以色列人呃显露，他们啊怕他，就想要逃走的。第二十九三十节 ，This fear on the part of the people would not necessarily imply a glory so excessive that it could not be endured. 人民怕摩西不一定是暗示着摩西脸上的荣光是那么的大，百姓受不了，不一定。The very fact that the rays of light emanated from Moses' face would have provided adequate basis for arousing terror in their hearts. 是的，啊、呃，摩西的脸上有着荣光啊、呃、发射出去，这个事实本身就足够让以色列人心中惧怕。As a matter of fact, the people returned to Moses when he summoned them. 但是事实是什么呢？事实是，当摩西呼召他们回来的时候，人民回到摩西那里 ，and they stood in his unveiled presence while he delivered to them the law. 那当摩西向他们传递神的律法的时候，他们站在他的面前，而摩西的帕子是除去的。参考第三十一、三十二节。The text explicitly indicates that. 这段经文明明的指出 ，that Moses completed giving the law to the people before he donned his veil. Moses 首先把上帝律法完全向人民传递了，然后他才穿上帕子。Only after Moses had finished speaking with them did he put the veil on his face. Verse thirty-three. 
，要等到摩西与以色列人讲完话之后，他才把帕子蒙上脸。第三十三节 ，The narrative proceeds to indicate the pattern by which Moses delivered the law to the people in its various installments. Verses thirty-four, thirty-five. 第三十四、三十五节，这段记载呢，就进一步指出摩西是用什么的样式。来把律法传给以色列人的，是多次的传递律法的。Moses will return to the Lord's presence, remove his veil. 摩西会回到耶和华面前，除去帕子 ，and receive an additional portion of the law's revelation. 这样子领受了律法的再一段的启示。The text is quite explicit that the people habitually would see the skin of Moses' face. Uh, that is shown, verse thirty-five. 经文是非常的清楚的。以色列人呢，习惯性的看到摩西的脸皮是发光的。第三十五节 ，After delivering his message, Moses would replace the veil on his face. 当摩西传完他的信息之后，他就再次的将帕子蒙上脸。三十四节。In his exposition of this passage, Paul pointedly indicates that. The glory of Moses' face was fading in character. 当保罗解释这段经文，就是解释出埃及记三十四章这段经文的时候，保罗直截了当的指出，摩西脸上的荣耀的性质是，的荣光是褪去的。How did he determine this fact? 那使徒保罗怎么决定事实的确是如此呢 ？Nothing in the narrative of Exodus 34 explicitly. Mentions that the glory of Moses' face ever faded. 在出埃及记三十四章的记载，没有明文提到摩西脸上的荣光在什么时候开始褪去。Apparently, Paul deduced the fact of the fading character of glory of Moses' face from the function of the veil in the narrative. 很明显的，使徒保罗怎么推论出摩西脸上的荣光有褪去这个性质呢？就是从这个这段历史。在记载里面，帕子扮演怎么一个角色 ？Moses was repeatedly donning his veil, says Paul, so that Israel might not gaze to the end of that which was fading. 摩西多次的蒙上帕子，保罗说，好叫以色列人呢不定睛看这个将要废去的这个结局。哥林多后书第三章十三节 ，The degree to which Israel perceived the significance of the symbol of Moses' veil is difficult to determine. 那么以色列人在什么程度上察看明白了摩西的帕子这个记号的重要性呢？这个问题不容易回答。Paul interprets the symbolism of the veil in terms of Israel's blindness to the transitory character of Mosaic law. 使徒保罗说这样来解释这个帕子的象征的。他说。这个象征着以色列人是盲目的，没有明白到摩西的律法是暂时性的。第十四节，哥林多后书三章十四节。The very fact that the veil symbolized blindness， 帕子象征着以色列人的盲目这个事实 ，infers that 有了这个的含义，我们可以这样推论 ：Israel was in a state of non-perceptibility with respect. To To the significance of the veil, 以色列人活在怎么一个状态中呢？就他们嗯不能够没有能力去查看究竟这个帕子的功用是什么。If Israel had apprehended the full significance of the veil, 假如以色列人明白帕子的完全的意义的话呢 ，then the apprehension would constitute a contradiction of the truth which the veil was intended to symbolize. 那么，假如他们理解的话，这个理解就。与真理矛盾，圣经的真理是啊，说帕子是用来象征以色列人的盲目的，所以呢，这个帕子是象征着以色列人对摩西的律法是暂时的，啊，这个约是会退去的，对这个事实的盲目。我们下次继续。我 continue next time.